Nice little light show we got here. Oop, went away. So Ford is sending me an F-150 to drive and I see it doesn't have a price on the window sticker because it's not for sale, it's for VIP and official use only. Let's see if we can get up some paperwork. Alright, got some paperwork, 81 grand for an F-150, holy Toledo. Well, the base price is 64 grand, we have a lot of options here. Got the trimmer package. That'll set you back almost 12 grand. Four more options. I don't know why we need a moonroof, but the bed liner certainly seems like a good idea. So we gotta tack that on. And they don't ship it for free, so that brings us full circle back to the 81 grand. Wow. And here it is in the flesh, so to speak. This is not black paint, it's a dark metallic blue which attracts heat like a magnet center 17 degrees outside. It's getting very hot in that cabin, but that's what they sent us. That's what we got. We have the trimmer emblem on the side so people know you spent the extra money. Trimmer decal on the side for the same reason. And a rear view. Ordinarily we do a complete review bumper to bumper. We're not going to do that here because there's too many features like the fancy cruise control system, the fancy tailgate, we'd be here all day, half hour. And most of those things have been covered in other videos. Here we're going to cover things that other people do not cover. For example, telling you the brand of tires they're sending us. Part of the trimmer package are these giant 33 inch tires. Grabbers by General. I'm not a fan of General tires, they would not be my first choice. They're putting these on because they're probably a bit cheaper than Goodrich or Goodyear's, but they're what you get. And within a vehicle, we check and see if there's a spare tire. There is a full-size grabber underneath. I'm not going to crawl underneath and show you because the pavement's extremely hot and I don't want to get fried alive like an egg in a frying pan. And then like other YouTube testers, we take the headlights out of the dark and see how they perform and do a night drive. We posted that separate video on YouTube already. We'll have a link for that at the end of this video. So you get two videos to watch for the price of one, which is free. So for your 11 grand, what are you getting with the trimmer package? And how is it different from the Raptor? Well, for starters, you're getting a beef suspension. The suspension has been raised about an inch, 9.4 inches to 9.8 inches, depending on which literature you believe. There's a lot of skid plates under there. Once again, I'm not crawling underneath this hot pavement to show you. Trust me, they're there. I looked when it was cooler. And of course, it wouldn't be a good off-roader without locking differentials. The front approach angle is slanted at 25.2 degrees. Ring angle, 26.9 for those interested in such specs. And one advantage it has over the larger Raptor, this is uh, 7 inches narrower, which is a bit more than half a foot when I went to school, which means you can crawl in tight spaces a lot better than that giant super wide Raptor, which is a problem sometimes. The F-150 Raptor is designed more for Baja 500 stuff, going at high speeds or rough pavement. Not rock crawling. This on the other hand is the opposite. Better for rock crawling rather than high speed desert running. This makes it a bit more practical in my book. And last time I checked, the Raptor towing ability, I think it was 8,000 pounds. You can correct me on that if I'm wrong. On this truck, the maximum is 13,500 pounds with 2,400 pounds in the bed. If you get the 3.5 liter EcoBoost, which we did not, we got the V8. Let's talk about that. There are two motors available with this package. A 5.0 V8 with 400 horsepower, torque rating of 410, fuel economy 15 to 20 MPG with an average of 17. That is what we have here. Working order the 3.5 EcoBoost Turbo same horsepower with a whopping 500 pounds feet of torque. Fuel economy a couple points higher. And there's only $100 difference between the V8 and the 3.5 turbo. So easy to take a choice without being bankrupted. I'll be frank about it, the 3.5 EcoBoost outperforms the V8 in almost every category. On the other hand, some people don't want to bother with the turbo and 3.5 because they want to keep the truck long term. And long term, turbos wear out 
after 150,000 miles can be an issue. So if you're gonna buy the truck and keep it till the wheels fall off, you're probably better with the V8. That's just my opinion. But two good choices. Take your pick. Here's your four-wheel drive system, two-wheel drive high, four-wheel drive high for off-road, four-wheel drive low for off-road, and four-wheel drive automatic for the street. That comes in very, very handy when it's raining or you got snow or ice on the pavement. Press this for locking differentials, I believe. We haven't taken off-road yet, we'll find out. The snobs for folding trailers, I'm not going to go into that. That's for the long videos. This is a short one. I'll just jump in and talk about some features I find uh, controversial, like the shifter here. Now if you want to work and put your laptop down or something, you just press this button and the shifter disappears. Okay, but uh, what if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you press this and it doesn't come back up? How do you shift? You could if we had pedal shifters on the steering wheel, but leave some comments in the comment section. That is why Aside from this demonstration, I'm not going to put that down. I don't want to take a chance. Number two, I cannot be any stretch of imagination to understand why any true truck owner would want a moonroof. I guess if you're spending 80 grand, what's another grand for that, right? My biggest nightmare is taking something like this out camping, opening the moonroof at night. Then in the morning it starts raining, the moonroof shorts out, and the whole truck gets flooded with water. It's happened on other brand of vehicles, and I just don't want a moonroof on a truck myself, but if you do, hey, here you go. They got everything else on here, why not? Now everybody's designing these fancy tailgates to outdo each other. Very, very expensive to replace if they get damaged. Let me demonstrate some of the features of this. Press the magic button. And you don't have to strain yourself to lower it. There you go. Press the button again. You don't have to strain yourself closing it. You know, this impresses your buddies, but how weak are we getting? I mean, you've got a big monster truck like this. I'm sure you got arms strong enough to lower and raise this yourself without help. This battery system and motor system creates a lot of weight on this truck. I don't think you really need, but apparently truck buyers, or some of them anyway, want this stuff. You can also open this sideways, like so, so if you have a bunch of trailer hitches down here, you can get inside without causing problems. Now this feature I like, hmm, where did I see this before? Honda Ridgeline? Hmm. By the way, this optional bed cover is very, very nice. Seems to be doing a pretty good job keeping the inside clean. I don't see any dust in there yet. If we take this off-roading out in the sand, we'll find out. That'll be later on in the video. Oh yeah, we have a measuring stick for measuring lumber and things like that. Nice little thought. Even though we have a step on the bumper, we have an electronic step that will come out. For very, very short people and some great tow hooks. I think all full-size pickup trucks should have tow hooks regardless if they're off-road or not. It's a truck. I remember when Toyota redesigned the Tundra, even with the off-road TRD Pro package, no tow hooks. Come on, what's up with that? But this is a Ford video, not a Toyota video, so I won't be talking about that. I'll try to keep this short. My one big, big complaint, this interior is only available in black. And let me tell you, if you live in Alaska, that's okay, but out here in the desert, it's 117 degrees at this moment. This color attracts heat like a magnet. It's like an oven in here. Even with air conditioning running for like 15, 20 minutes, it still gets hot. If I step out more than five minutes, it goes right back up to extreme temperature inside, way above 117 degrees outside. I've been roasting alive in this truck for two days. It is no fun. They should offer a different color, like a tan or something. And certainly, the color on the outside, which is pretty close to black, even though it's blue, doesn't help. That's sucking up a lot of heat in the body system, too. And now people send me emails, well, you got air conditioning, then it solve the problem, and no. Not even close. You do get a large info screen, I think this is a 12-inch unit. Got lots and lots of menus I'm not going to cover because we'll be here all day, but 
driver assistance. That's the first thing I go to. Disconnect all these stupid safety nannies that are more dangerous than safe. You have something called trail turn assist for rock crawling. Somebody had turned off. That's something I want to have on. Got a very nice camera system. Seem to have a lot of options here. And I detect a spy camera looking at me here. Probably part of that fancy cruise control system we'll talk about a bit later, which I have no intention of using. Hands free, you know the drill. Even though this rake has a stiff suspension and giant tires, the ride seems pretty smooth, so let's take some speed bumps and find out. Here comes a medium bump. Didn't feel a thing, that was 20 miles per hour, let's speed up to 25. Didn't feel a thing, didn't hear a thing. Bump number three. Here comes the nasty one. Hang on for your life. A slight inconvenience. Very, very smooth. Not quite as smooth as a Raptor, but good enough. I usually don't take this speed bump coming up. It's a real killer. I would never do it on a conventional truck, but hey, we got an expensive suspension here, so let's give it a try. Hang on, oh! Wow. That would not have been good on a standard suspension, but again, didn't feel a thing. I'm very, very impressed. I've driven just about all of the Raptor and Tremor vehicles that Ford has in stock. I have to say, these suspensions have impressed me. I have no complaints whatsoever, and I don't have any on this one yet. We haven't taken it off-road yet. That's coming up next as well as some highway cruising. And we got a front camera system to let you know how close you're coming to poles and curbs. Hey, come back here. I guess it doesn't want to stay on very long. By the way, for the past 51 miles, two hours of driving, that's average around 25 miles per hour in city commuting. 13.8 MPG. Well, we're using the air conditioner full blast, so that doesn't help. More fuel economy numbers coming up, don't go away. We're going to take a highway trip, see what type of numbers we can get. So here we go. By the way, this is a very smooth highway cruiser. The wind noise is a bit lower than I expected, especially considering the high ride height. While the suspension is comfortable enough, the steering's a bit on the sloppy side much feel in the center but it's a truck so you get used to it. Well 17.4 that's the best we could do thus far. This vehicle has something called Blue Cruise. It's one of those self-driving programs you take your hands off the wheel and do whatever people do when they take their hands off the wheel while the vehicle drives itself. I guess that could be playing on your cell phone or reading the newspaper I don't know. I'm not going to demonstrate the unit because I have no interest in using the unit and I don't think anyone else should be allowed to use units like this either. I think all self-driving features on cars or trucks should be banned and outlawed myself. And I'm not picking on Ford here, I'm picking on all auto manufacturers. Are you listening, Tesla? Every year you have thousands and thousands of accidents because people are not paying attention when they're driving. You're supposed to have your eyes on the road, not on your cell phone. So why do car makers making all these devices that allow you to take your attention away from driving? Like Blue Cruise. So, that's just my opinion on that. We're not going to be using it on this video. We have to go to another video to see how that works. Sorry. I don't have any issues with conventional cruise control though, and that's what we'll be using on this trip most of the time. Under the hood, I like the 5.0 liter V8. It's a very simple engine would probably be my choice or the EcoBoost personally, but then again I have to admit when it comes to torque and pulling ability, this V8 just doesn't cut up compared to the EcoBoost engines. We're climbing uphill now and this V8 is a bit more strained than I'd be in the EcoBoost with the turbos. Hopefully and thankfully I'm not towing anything, nor will I be. If you're towing a trailer or heavy loads, 
the EcoBoost is still a better choice, I think. So here we are at the border crossing. Looking for illegals and anything else that might be in here. Getting through is very simple. You say, Senor, I know speak English. And they just wave you through. See? Works every time. By the way, this vehicle has a 36 gallon fuel tank. So you can go a long ways if you're off-roading like this, but very expensive to fill up. Around 135 bucks a pop. With gas being around 350 a gallon. If you live in California, huh, lots of luck. And one disadvantage with a big truck like this, you go on extreme narrow trails. It's hard to turn around, assuming you can even fit in the first place. I had far better luck with the Ford Ranger Raptor on these trails than I am with this. Bigger is not always better. This suspension is doing a great job of absorbing nasty impacts on these washboard roads. Just looking at it, you think this is a smooth road, but it's not. Like every few inches, you have a little tiny dip. You can really tear your suspension apart at high speed, but the suspension on this one is doing a great job of getting rid of the impacts before it comes to the cabin. And again, a problem with these big trucks you get in a tight squeeze, you have to turn around, make a U turn. Yeah, I know. This is what you'll be doing often. If you can turn around and have enough room, which I barely do here. Nice camera system. I think we already looked at this. That's why, for serious off roading, I prefer the compact trucks. Myself. But again, the suspension is doing a great job absorbing the impacts, and this is a very, very comfortable rig to drive. And here's another example of why big trucks don't always work when you're going off-road. I'm not taking this big rig down that narrow path. Anyway, it's nice to have an excellent camera system, so you can back up without going off in that ditch. That's about 10 feet to my right. So what do you think? Can this vehicle make it across the stream? What if I sink down in there? Ford might get a bit upset because they want this vehicle back tomorrow. Nah, better not. So after driving this truck for a week, the question is, is the trimmer package worth the extra 11 grand? To that, I'd say absolutely if you have any plans on going off-road. A good value for the money. I don't think you could build it yourself any cheaper. That's the good news. The bad news is you just can't order the trimmer package on any F-150. You have to buy the upgraded fancy models first. I think they're called the Lariat or whatever. Which means you'll probably have 50, 60 grand in the truck before you even get to the trimmer package. Which explains why we have an $81,000 truck here. And it's the same with all the Ford trucks in the line. The trimmer package on the little Maverick. You have to order the upgraded truck before you get the trimmer package on that too. Which brings you around $35,000 starting. A big jump from the $22,000 base price. And I'm not picking up Ford here. Almost all the truck makers do the same thing. Toyota is one of the worst. So if you want a trimmer, be prepared to shill out lots and lots of money. But it's still less expensive than going to the full-size Raptor. Which approaches like a hundred grand loaded up with everything. And the Raptor is not where you made for rock crawling. This is. And V8 versus EcoBoost, either one will do. Now if you want to see the headlight test of night drive we did coming up, here's the link. Click and watch.